Wow. We will start with 140 and go to 180 after that. Where's 140? Right here. Con congratulations, Karen Peterson with Awards Daily. Hi. Hi. In your acceptance speech, you were talking about how this is a big moment for female athletes in movies. Can you talk a little bit more about that? Yeah, so our film, The Queen of Basketball, is about Lucy Harris, uh, who is a pioneer of the game of basketball. She was the first and only woman to officially be drafted into the NBA. She said no. Uh, she's the first woman and the first woman of color who was enshrined in the Basketball Hall of Fame. She led her small Delta, Mississippi Delta team to three national championships. She scored the first basket in women's Olympic history. And her story was basically ignored for 45 years until she told it to me in July 2020. And I think this win shows not only that Lucy Harris, uh, her story means something profound to America and to the world, and I think it speaks to the fact that any naysayer who says, you know, it's, it's, the, the w female athletes don't deserve the world stage, I hope this helps contribute um, to changing that and ending this disparity and closing the gap in terms of uh, compensation, in terms of exposure that female athletes get in comparison to men. Uh, 180 and we'll go to 155. This is like an auction. I know, right? In 180, here. 180, 180, 180. <laughs> 180. Nick Hamilton, uh, Media. Congratulations. Thank you. Um, Two-part question. One, what was it like having executive producers like Shaquille O'Neal and Steph Curry uh, be a part of this project? And then also, how does this help uh, bring more awareness to the WNBA as far as women's athletics is concerned? Yeah. It was amazing working with Shaq. It was amazing working with Steph. Their entire teams are fantastic. And for them to step up and use their platform and use their you know, capital to tell this story and get it out there and lift Lucy on their shoulders is a big reason why so many people are finding out about her story and paying attention to the history of women's basketball. I don't know what effect it will have on the WNBA, but I hope it makes people pay attention that every player on that court, every WNBA player has a story, just like Lucy had a story. And that's really what makes any game or any story interesting to watch are the, the people. And I hope that uh, people start paying attention to people's stories because that's what makes a, a game, a sport, a story, a pleasure to watch is knowing who those people are. And uh, yeah, I, I, hope, I hope it makes the contribution that Lucy would want to want to make and, and draw attention to those stories and uh, make it easier to find those games, <laughs> watch those games. I know that was something that was important to her. Okay, 155, and we'll Thank go you for, 171 uh, after you. Thank you for making this incredible short, and also for letting Lucy tell her own story straight to the camera. You felt like you were in the room with her. Yeah. Um, it's, it's so sad that she didn't live to see this moment. What, what does this Oscar mean for Lucy and for her family? And thanks for recognizing her family. It's a big part of the story. Yeah, it is. Um, well, Lucy got to see the movie. Uh, at Tribeca in New York, uh, and she loved it, and she was there with her family, and I know it meant a lot. The last time I saw her, I was helping her into her car, and she gave me a big hug, and she whispered thank you in my ear. And um, it's hard not to think about that and, and um, not get emotional, but I think, you know, Lucy's four children and their partners knew how amazing of a story this was, I think Lucy knew how amazing a story it was. And, you know, I'm a craftsperson. You know, I'm a story craftsperson. I'm a filmmaker. And honestly, in the first 10 minutes of interviewing Lucy, I said to myself, I just better not screw this up. <laughs> this, is, this is a really important story. She's an amazing storyteller. You can watch the film for free on YouTube, probably one of the very few. Oscar-nominated films you can watch for free. It's 20 minutes long on YouTube, very accessible. So I hope everybody watches uh, the story of Lucy Harris from, from her mouth. I know it means a lot to me and, and to her family. All right, 171 followed by 158. Hi, Stephanie Holland from The Root. Hi. Hi. Uh, I'm wondering if you think that the success of your film will encourage more stories to be told about 
the history of women's sports and specifically black women's history in sports? God, I hope so. I hope so. Um, Lucy, Lu Lucy is a, is a representative of generations uh, of women, and particularly women of color, whose story has not been told, um, whose stories have not been celebrated. And, you know, I think people are starting to get wise to the fact that there's a whole lot of people and a whole lot of stories that they don't know. It's not that it didn't happen. It's that those stories haven't been told. So yes, I hope many, film, many more films get made uh, about the, the history of women athletes and, and women athletes of color. And I hope that they're short documentaries. And I hope they're for free on YouTube so everybody can see the story. All right, 158 followed by our remote press. Hi. Um, Maureen Lee Linker of EW back here. We went hey. to USC together, fight on. Oh my gosh. <laughs> um, I wanted to ask, you were very outspoken on Twitter about the Academy's decision to do the, these eight categories uh, before the live broadcast. Um, did you consider making a statement about it tonight? And if so, why did you decide not to? It's about priorities. Um, this is Lucy Harris's Academy Award. She told her story. I helped her, I gave her an assist, but it's her story. And you know, details of how a, a television award show are, is produced can create uh, a lot of grumpy people. But at the end of the day, we didn't make the film for that. We made the film to honor Lucy Harris, and I was squarely focused on that, and I will continue to be. And I'll also continue to, to voice um, my concerns on behalf of the short documentary that there's no perceived difference in importance. There's, no, nothing, there's nothing less or small just because it's short. And I think uh, Lucy Harris's family would agree. Um, now we'll take a question from our remote press from Shorts TV. Shorts TV, somewhere out there. Congratulations! Thank you very much. <laughs> um, you're a very strong advocate of the short form, and clearly it's working extremely well for you. Uh, so tell us what does that mean for, for you and the short form, and uh, in, in general as an art form in itself, and not as a stepping stone for a, for a long version. Yeah, I, I'm uh, I'm committed to short documentaries. You know, a lot of people see short documentaries as a stepping stone or a calling card for feature documentaries or big narrative feature films. I think uh, the short documentary is the most democratic form of cinema. It has the lowest barrier of entry to finance and make. It has the lowest barrier of entry to the audience to see it. And I hope that short documentaries can become more and more visible. Uh, you know, five times as many hours spent watching YouTube as Netflix. So I'm hoping that people continue to make short documentaries. Aspiring filmmakers, young filmmakers, make short documentaries. It's cinema. These are real movies that can change the world and that can close elisions in history forever, like I think we've helped do here today. And Thank you. Oh. Thank you. <laughs> Next up is Florida Weekly. Where's Florida? They're virtual. Virtual, OK. In theory. Is Florida Weekly there? This is like mission control in here. I'm well, impressed. Then uh, let's move on to SRMG. Anything? Anything? Hi, Tara Kajazi for SRMG, Saida Tia, and AboutHer.com. Uh, congratulations. You did a phenomenal job documenting Lucy's unsung achievement as one of the greatest basketball players of all time. What was the biggest challenge for you in telling her story? I honestly think that the biggest challenge, the, the biggest challenge was trying to make sure that the film met with uh, the spirit of the story that she told. You know, she told her entire life story over 11 hours and uh, our job as a team of filmmakers was to get that, edit that story down into the 22 minutes that you saw. And that's our job as filmmakers, as documentary filmmakers, is to try to find the essence um, of a person, of a narrative, of a story. And that was the hardest thing, you know, by far, is, is what to pick, 
how to order it. Uh, it came together uh, in the edit for us, as so many documentaries do. And we do have Florida Weekly back, so. Florida, <laughs> what's going on in Florida? Oh, it's just beautiful weather here. P please be sure to come on down. Okay. Um, congratulations. Uh, I do wonder, uh, 22 minutes, uh, why you did, did you think of making it longer? And with a lot of other short doc filmmakers out there, can you encourage them where they see their short docs and films most accepted, seen, and distributed? I, no, I did not think of making it longer. Um, you know, like a lot of artists, my goal is elegance. You know, no extra pieces, nothing redundant. Uh, it's about making sure that there are, there's nothing in there uh, that doesn't advance the narrative or tell the story. Um, in terms of where you can see these films, I mean, for short documentary filmmakers, you know, this is a New York Times op doc. They have, you know, commissioned and published close to 400 short documentaries over 10 years. Uh, these films are on YouTube, they're on Vimeo. A Vimeo staff pick started my career. Uh, short of the week, I mean, this is an internet medium. That's what's interesting here, is that the internet has transformed cinema and it's happening through short documentary uh, because that's the appropriate length of time that you wanna see. You, you also notice, you know, in the film, Lucy's face, you're close on Lucy's face. The reason that we did that is because most people watch our film on their phone. And I think short documentary is the, the door through which the internet will truly transform and democratize cinema. That's why the short documentary will be the youngest, the most diverse, the most international form of cinema going forward.